The UN has sounded a stark warning on the humanitarian situation in Afghanistan. A UN Children's Fund official speaking in New York earlier in the month shared some new information. Today, an estimated 90% of Afghans are on the brink of poverty. Children bear the brunt of it. <clears throat> 2.3 million children are expected to face acute malnutrition in 2023. <clears throat> 875,000 of them need treatment for severe acute malnutrition, a life-threatening condition. Also this year, around 840,000 pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers are likely to experience acute malnutrition. Access to food is one of the biggest problems in Afghanistan, with women and children facing the brunt of it. It's something aid agencies have been trying to resolve, but it's an uphill battle. Women trying to force their way into a UN World Food Programme distribution point, while men struggle to maintain order. It's an unusual scene, even for Afghanistan, and it shows just how desperate the people here are. They told us that aid deliveries will stop. The situation isn't good. All the women queuing up here are struggling to make ends meet. The World Food Programme's Philipp Kropf shows us what the food aid consists of. A family of seven receives 50 kilograms of flour, six kilos of lentils, 4.5 litres of oil and some salt. One ration is supposed to last two weeks. In the last 20 months, the UN has delivered aid to 23 million people. Now the funding is in jeopardy. The World Food Programme has received no money since the start of the year. In April, we had to cut back our support for 13 million people to just 5 million. And if no new money comes in, then the end of May will see the last distribution in Afghanistan. What's that like for you as the one who's responsible here? Our colleagues had to tell the people out there that they won't get food anymore. It's horrible. Nobody wants to have to do that. If there's no more humanitarian assistance, some 19 million people could face starvation. 54% of young children are already malnourished. And the crisis isn't just affecting rural areas. It's hitting the capital too. There is food, but fewer and fewer people can afford it. The work of international aid organizations is becoming increasingly difficult too. Since the Taliban ordered that women are no longer allowed to work for them, some have even considered pulling out. We're the World Food Programme. We will not stop our support. We cannot just abandon these millions of hungry people, half of them women and girls, who are already the most vulnerable. The women waiting in line outside have already lost almost everything, their jobs and their rights. Now they tell us they're about to lose what little they have left. We can't do anything if they stop the aid. I don't know what will be left for us then. It's a desperate situation. And flour and rice alone won't solve this humanitarian crisis. It's up to the UN to figure out how to support Afghanistan in the long term. And uh, joining me now is Afghanistan Country Director for the World Food Programme, Xia Wei Li. Ms. Li, are you getting enough international support to be able to support Afghans? <laughs> At the moment, we have significant funding shortages. For the next six months, we're short of $900 million. And what we have seen, though, is generous contributions over the last year and a half, and that needs to be sustained. What is going wrong? I mean, $900 million doesn't appear to be a very small amount. Do you think there is a lack of commitment from the international community, or is it that the community is preoccupied with other crises in the world right now. It's a combination of factors. Certainly, we recognize that there are global crises across the globe, many of them that require the assistance of WFP and, and the donor contributions. But what we do need to still see and recognize is 
One, WFP and with donor contributions made a very big difference in Afghanistan over the last year and a half. We've essentially averted worst case scenarios over the last two winters, bringing people out from the depths of crisis. But that hasn't changed and we need to then see how we can continue, especially for the next winter. And so we have a very big appeal at the moment. Yes, $900 million is not small, but it is required to be able to help the people of Afghanistan. Just so we understand the, the context better, what happens if you don't receive $900 million over the next six months? Well, we're already seeing the consequences. We've had to make major cuts because of the funding shortfalls. The, in very simple terms, the difference between what we were able to do in March and what we're able to do this month in May is that we've had to remove 8 million people from assistance. And that's very significant. Uh, we've also had to cut rations, which essentially is the amount of food that we can give people. And I've spoken with grandmothers, mothers who talked about how the assistance we were able to provide before, coupled with the amount that they were able to make as a family, the, the little wages that they're able to get, they could get by. But now with the ration cuts and reduction in food that we're able to give them, they're not able to get by. And certain, we're already seeing it with increases in malnutrition. And those who receive our assistance are actually the lucky ones because the 8 million people that we've had to completely cut from our assistance, they're the ones who are not getting any assistance at all. And these people who aren't getting any assistance from you, are they basically, well, let's just say alone with their situation, there is nobody to help them? Is, is that what this means? They're certainly struggling. They're very, very much struggling on, um, at the moment. Where ours, we've had to prioritize more and more assistance. We certainly recognize some of the most vulnerable families in Afghanistan are women, women-headed households, such as widows, um, the elderly, children, and people with disabilities. But far more than those categories are people who need assistance. And as I mentioned before, the little that they're able to make isn't enough to get them by. I mean, aid agencies can only do so much and for so long, I would imagine. What do you think will it take for Afghanistan to be able to support itself into the future? Lots of different aspects. One with the economy, there needs to be some life breathed into the economy. But WFP, while we may be best known for our large scale humanitarian assistance, we've also been working quite a lot with communities, with households, to help them with their resilience and to help build and increase their productivity. We've worked with women, for example, with giving them not only training, but then connecting them to markets so that they can have self um, self-reliance and be able to, to make a living on their own. Those programs need to expand. Those programs need funding to be able to continue helping them so that we can make that shift. As somebody in Afghanistan and somebody so deeply involved with the, with the NGO work and the aid work in the country, is it fair to ask or fair to say that perhaps the biggest sufferers in Afghanistan at the moment are its women and children? The most vulnerable in Afghanistan are women and children. And so, of course, that remains our guiding light as to the people in need that we serve. WFP's assistance is always based on need and the levels of vulnerability. And we do prioritize women and children because of those high levels of vulnerability. And they are suffering. We'll leave it there for the time being. But thank you so much for joining us today. Xiao Wei Li from the World Food Programme. Thank you. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, the country's Taliban leadership is pressing ahead with the construction of a dam that has irked Iran. Iran says the dam on the Farah River could affect the flow of water into the country with damaging consequences. The Taliban, though, is unperturbed. Taliban leadership arrives in Farah province. They are here to announce the resumption of the construction of Bakshabad Dam, a much-anticipated decision in the area. 
The leadership hopes once the construction finishes, the dam could generate 27 megawatts of power and it would help in the irrigation of thousands of hectares of agricultural land. This dam can be like a beehive for Farah and half of Afghanistan. It can provide job opportunities for the residents of Farah and neighboring provinces. The locals will invite them to come here to work in their fields. But the project is stoking conflict with Afghanistan's neighbor, Iran. Iran already blames Afghanistan for having dammed the flow of water in another major cross-border river. Tehran now strongly opposes the construction of the dam in Farah province. It fears the new project could threaten the water supply to its eastern provinces that face severe water scarcity. I ask the rulers of Afghanistan to take my words seriously. I'm warning them that they should quickly honor the water rights of Iran's Sistan and Baluchistan regions. But Afghanistan says Farah province is losing underground water and if the dam is not constructed, local population would be forced to migrate over the next 10 years. Afghanistan is not a small country. As the Minister for Energy and Water mentioned, our roads are broken and our other infrastructure is in the same condition, the dams as well. There is not a single thing that does not need reconstruction. As the region faces severe droughts and water shortages, conflicts over water are unlikely to end soon.